because uh, the story really seems uh, right up uh, the director's uh, alley, uh, it's actually a very watchable, uh, very good natured, very uh, affecting uh, movie. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Kit, uh, this is Vernon, and uh, we just watched uh, Blinded by the Light. Uh, so Vernon, what did we just watch? We just watched the Bruce Springsteen musical. Okay, it's not a Mamma Mia musical in the sense that it's not the kind of musical where you go and sing along. But it's a Mamma Mia musical in that there's a very contrived story that some Bruce Springsteen songs have been chosen to be set. Contrived, but uh, it's based on a true story, right? Based on a true story is not the same as a true story. When when a film tells you it's based on a true story, it means that liberties have been taken. Uh, I, I think that might be a rather technical uh, uh, distinction that uh, is interesting to movie buffs and to industry professionals, but uh, the general public will not realize uh, that yeah, some liberties uh, might be taken. A true story. If these three words flash on the screen before the movie starts, the director, the script writers have taken every step, every measure they could to make sure that everything that they say happened in the film actually did happen in real life. Because this movie uh, is based on actually a memoir by a real life uh, person, uh, a Pakistani uh, a boy who grew up uh, in uh, England. He's a British citizen. So the gimmick of the film is Bruce Springsteen musical. But the twist is it's a Bruce Springsteen musical as reflected through the life story or the coming of age story rather of this British Pakistani boy. Uh, as he struggles to uh, grow up, <laughs> come to terms with his identity as British. Uh, whereas his father uh, keeps on telling him that uh, he'll never be British, he's Pakistani. And also like uh, growing up uh, with uh, uh, anti-Pakistani racism uh, at that time. Which basically in the 1980s. Of course, we also have to consider that his father was a first generation immigrant to Britain. So, um, probably experiences, I mean, it's a classic story, immigrant story of the conflict between the first and second generation of an immigrant family. Which actually sounds a bit like Bended like Beckham. Well, um, sounds like but it's not a coincidence because the director of Bended like Beckham also directed and produced this film. So the director, Gurinder Chada, uh, probably uh, read the book and because it resonated uh, with her own uh, uh, personal story, uh, decided to make it uh, into a movie. Uh, that, that's my guess. Yeah, that's my guess as well. I mean, given that uh, Gurinda Chada has made several movies uh, with the same or similar themes, I guess she's a very consistent director with one strong story to tell. Which is not uncommon because uh, John Borman who's most famous for Excalibur, has uh, said that, uh, yeah, that's what happened to him. And he only realized it in retrospect, after he made the movies and he looked back on them, and he realized that uh, they all had a similar theme. Isn't John Berman the guy who also directed uh, the... Zardoz. <laughs> How did that fit into his theory that directors make the same film again and again? Well, he killed off... Uh, all the people in the end, right? All, all the people who were actually responsible for their, his creation. Yeah, in the, father, the, end. the father figure, yeah. Uh, John Bowman's Excalibur ends with uh, Mordred and uh, King Arthur killing each other. Because uh, the story really seems uh, right up uh, the director's uh, alley, uh, it's actually a very watchable, uh, very good-natured, very uh, affecting 
uh, movie. If we look at it, it's a move. It's a growing up story of a minority kid who wants to be accepted by the majority of Britain, whom the his parents have told him for years will never accept him. You know, it's it's kind of a generic movie in that sense. But the the gimmick is that he identifies with an American uh, singer songwriter. Yeah. Um, he finds his voice and finds his courage to speak out and disagree with his authoritarian or very paternal father after discovering Bruce Springsteen's music in school. Uh, which also gives him the confidence uh, to take his own uh, writing seriously. And also lend him a girlfriend. See how generic it is? But it works. Yeah, so it, it comes back to what we were talking earlier about based on the true story. So uh, if you realize that um, based on a true story means that some liberties can be taken, if you're watching the movie, you start wondering, uh, okay, so is this part real? Is this part contrived? Did they make it up? Uh, yeah. yeah, so it can be a bit distracting. <laughs> uh, like Vernon said, uh, the girlfriend uh, part is like very Hollywood. It might be real, it might not. Uh, a more uh, Hollywood kind of uh, event contrivance uh, would be uh, on his uh, elder sister's uh, wedding day uh, he has to uh, run off and buy uh, tickets to uh, Bruce uh, Springsteen concert at Wembley Stadium and at the same time uh, his family uh, gets uh, into an altercation with an anti uh, Pakistani uh, demonstration march I didn't watch it more for a growing up story part of the movie. I watch it more as a musical, which is why I kind of forgave all the ridiculous contrivances and coincidences that happen in the film. Two things didn't work for me. One is that I'm not really a Springsteen fan. <laughs> so uh, even though Mamma Mia is considered a very fluffy uh, movie, I actually enjoyed it more because I'm more of an ABBA fan. And let's face it, Ebba's music is a lot more accessible than Bruce Springsteen's. He, he's got melodies, but they're not pop-friendly yeah, melodies. They're not pop. Yeah, yeah. He has lyrics, but they don't rhyme. But uh, yeah, okay, it's based on a true story. And the thing about Springsteen's um, classic uh, songs, not the chart toppers like Born in the USA, but his earlier stuff that his hardcore fans really... Uh, like more uh, it's that the lyrics are like kind of uh, atmospheric or indirect uh, they're like poetry and uh, the protagonist is actually a poet so it makes or sense wants to be a poet so it makes sense that uh, Springsteen's uh, lyrics would speak to him whereas I'm not a poet so it does not speak to me <laughs> so uh, in, in the sense of fitting the character and inspiring him, it works. But in the sense of inspiring me as an audience member to like really groove with, uh, with uh, the music, uh, it didn't work. The difference that Springsteen uh, made was that it gave him the confidence uh, in his own work to actually show his uh, poems to his teacher. In terms of like... Uh, emotional impact uh, in, as far as nostalgia goes uh, it was actually the other uh, 80s hits that they played the non Springsteen songs uh, that um, affected me more I mean uh, Pet Shop Boys you know. I think this is the uh, very slight weakness of the movie in that when they compare Bruce Springsteen's songs from the 70s to even the most uh, pulpy pop popular songs in Britain in the 80s it's like there's very little con contest actually yeah so it actually had the opposite effect they were tr they were trying to show like oh okay this is like shallow plastic uh, pop stuff whereas Springsteen is like deep meaningful and universal timeless but uh, it was actually the, the, the shallow pop stuff that <laughs> actually uh, meant more to me I think what this film misses the point of is that while 80s synth music was very melodic 
very trashy. It was actually also very subversive. For me, the most impressive part of this movie is how it gets all the period details. Um, the cars? The cars, the street, the clothes, the album shop. Um, the town of L Luton actually feels like the town of Luton from the 80s, but in all probability, this is this was all done on studio sets because this is a Healing Studios production. Oh, you mean the street scenes too? I think so. Oh, okay. And basically, Ealing Studios is a really, really famous studio that started making movies in the UK since the 30s. They sort of became defunct for a while, um, were bought over by the BBC, sold by the BBC, and now they are known for making indie movies that require authentic period detail on an indie budget. Oh, and I mean with today's technology, you can green screen a lot of the buildings uh, anyway. But Ealing still owns the studios and the set, so it's most likely actual objects rather than green screen or CGI. Or some combination. Hmm. But the budget for this movie is uh, US 15 million, which is, I guess, uh, indie movie range. Very indie movie range for the UK. And it was also partially funded by the BFI and the National Lotto. Uh, British Film Institute. And the British Lottery. It's a very professionally uh, shot, blocked, uh, edited. Uh, there's nothing that it's really uh, distracting. Production details are really, really great, especially period details. I mean, considering that part of this film takes place in a weekend market where everyone's plying their wares, that you know, the amount of props from the 80s they need to curate. I, I, I'm an 80s child, but I don't know anything about 80s Britain, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> they've got um, 80s cafeteria. They've got a uh, job centre, which I believe no longer looks anything like that these days. A another uh, seemingly contrived uh, point uh, is that, uh, yeah, so his uh, neighbourhood uh, best friend's father is supposed to be like a fellow uh, Springsteen fan whereas his best friend is not and that kind of leads to a, a bit of a falling out between uh, him and his best friend. Uh, but what's so contrived about this situation? Uh, because uh, Springsteen's uh, like really um, classic albums are like in the 70s whereas uh, his father would be more of a 60s guy. So the age, uh, the, the years just don't seem to, to add up. Uh, and, and for those of you who are not so familiar with Springsteen's music, uh, this might sound confusing to you because you think of Springsteen as an 80s guy. Well, that's because his uh, big breakout hit... Born uh, in the USA was in both, the... Both the album and the song. Right. Uh, uh, was released in the 80s but uh, his uh, hardcore fan fans uh, consider his uh, earlier albums in, from the 70s and maybe early 80s uh, albums like uh, The River and uh, Born to Run the, the songs uh, from these two uh, albums uh, and, and a few others uh, were uh, used uh, prominently uh, in, in the movie uh, yeah, As so, opposed to his more popular songs that people remember these days. Yep. Yeah, so uh, Springsteen is, is more of a 70s guy. Even though uh, he has uh, had a long career up to the 90s and uh, maybe even until now, I don't know. I, I haven't been following him. I wasn't expecting too much from this movie. It actually turned out a lot uh, better than I expected. But th that's... Um, Partly because 
this kind of like feel good uh, <laughs> movie normally isn't my cup of tea. I'm more of an action science fiction guy. Uh, but yeah, e even for a uh, Michael Bay fan like me, or Roland Emmerich, um, I, I really enjoyed this. Uh, they were like, and, and I'm a pacing guy, so they were like no boring points. Even though it was kind of not very plot heavy, or more character driven, uh, it just kept on moving. The scenes didn't feel too long, it just kept on moving along. Uh, having watched Bandit Like Beckham, previously and I think one or two other films from Chada, I'd say that this is her kind of film but this is actually very generic for a film that she's directing. It, it's she's, a... she's tackled for, for, for the growing up as a uh, second generation immigrant kind of story that she's been telling, this film kind of doesn't really commend itself if we were to watch it on those merits. You're, you're saying that she's repeating herself? Um, I'm saying that she repeats herself to great success in a lot of films, but not this one. It's not a great success? It's, I think, not a great success if you watched it for the specific reason of watching the stories that she tends to tell. Um, but, maybe it's more about the family, the relationship between yeah, the it's, son it's, and the it father. It feels too generic. It's not like, wow, there's an arresting, unforgettable gimmick like Bandit like Beckham. But as a musical, it, I think it's a really, really great effort. Uh, now thinking about it, uh, it actually reminds me of uh, a recent movie, uh, Lady Bird, uh, which starred uh, Saoirse Ronan, which was more about the relationship between uh, a teenage daughter uh, and her mother, which I didn't really get. <laughs> Until you watched this film. Uh, no, I still don't get it because... Oh, no. uh, I'm not a daughter or a mother, so I, I, I really didn't relate to it. I thought it's like, uh, nothing happens. <laughs> yeah, they just bicker a lot, right? Yeah, and it, it doesn't like really resolve anything. They, they don't really seem to like learn anything. Or, or maybe I missed it. Yeah. But that's also, uh, I think, uh, uh, autobiographical. So if you liked uh, Lady Bird, you might like uh, Blinded by the Light and vice versa. To me, um, the mashup between growing up story and musical didn't mesh as well as expected, but it was still very entertaining. Yeah, so at the end of the day, it's an entertaining movie, uh, which might have been done before, but it's... You might have watched it, but uh, it's still different from the majority of the Hollywood uh, stuff. So. Yeah, because of the twist. Because nobody expects a Bruce Springsteen movie to be told from the point of view of someone who's not American at all. I I'm a Pink Floyd guy. They, they should make a movie about uh, this teenager growing up uh, identifying with Pink Floyd. I'm a David Bowie guy. Maybe they should make a movie about Pink Floyd and David Bowie. Anyway, uh, that's all we got. We'll see you next week. Bye.